right, today I have an instructional video on how to change the VCT solenoids on the 4.6 liter and the 5.4 liter three valve engines. Now they're pretty common to stick on these, especially the higher mileage, or if you have as lack of maintenance on the engine, they'll stick at low mileage, so let's say 40, 50, 60,000 miles. Uh, whereas now, I'm sure you guys are experiencing this more because the vehicles, you know, from 04 on, they started using this. Well, by now, 2015, we're starting to see some high mileage on these vehicles, and no matter what, we're gonna start seeing failures like this. Phasers making knocking noises, uh, chains coming apart, tensioners blowing out, and these solenoids sticking. They stick in their bore, and they cause all kinds of drivability issues, especially after you, when you come down to a stop, after you've been driving for a while. And what happens is, uh, you're driving along, uh, the signal gets sent out to the solenoid for it to advance the timing. It opens up the solenoid, lets oil flow to the phaser, the phaser advances, gives you better fuel economy, power, all that garbage, right? Well, it gets stuck in that uh, advanced phase on there, it continually flows oil to it, even when the PCM pulls power from the solenoid. You get to your stop, your stoplight, and you're over advanced, and the engine feels, it idles really rough, and it feels like it's going to die out, or it, or it does die out. So in this video, I'll walk you right through it. Um, there's a few different minor changes from the 4.6 to the 5.4, mainly in the amount of bolts in the valve cover, uh, depending on early and late builds, and of course, the torque sequence. All that information will be down below in the description, along with the new updated VCT solenoids from Ford. I'd only get the Ford VCT solenoids, and those will be down below in the description, so you can just click on those and order them up on there. Now in order to get to these VCT solenoids on the 4.6 liter and 5.4 liter, you're going to have to remove the valve cover, and it's just a bunch of bolts going all the way around it. There's some in the back, they're buried, and there's some up here, a bunch of uh, harnesses and such like that attached to it, so, uh, some PCV lines, and of course your coils have to come out. After that, these are going to be stuck on here. This one's loose as far as the bolts. We're going to have to break the sealant bond up here in the front to get the pop off of there. There we go. And then the driver's side, you're going to have the, um, the oil dipstick tube here. That's going to be attached to the head. You're going to pull the 8mm screw out of there and kind of pull it back a little bit so you can get clearance to get it off of there. And just make sure you pull it up high enough to actually clear the VCT solenoid. Kind of a fight, but it's not too bad. Just kind of force the oil dipstick tube out of the way. It's flexible, nothing's going to happen to it. There we go. And then you're always going to have your valve cover gas gets stuck on here always gets stuck to the head side the hot side get that out of there this one's really dry rotted nice and hard get that out of there we're going to change that either way let's clean this up real quick And you can see this engine was not taken care of too well, and that's the reason why, at less than 100,000, this VCT solenite is already sticking. It's quite a bit of varnish in here, and it doesn't take much for that solenite to start sticking. It's pretty precise inside of there. This isn't the worst engine I've seen, but it isn't, you know, isn't good. Now before you pull that bolt out, just make sure you put rags all the way around here, just keeps you lose that little bolt, because that's going to fall down right into the front cover cavity, and we're going to lose it, um, and we're going to have to go fishing for it, whereas this way, we got something to catch it. Now of course you want to sit here and take it out and be ready, and hold it very well. A lot of times what I'll do is just this. You got it on there, the bolt's in there still. I'll pull a solenoid and the bolt out together. And that way it's kind of captured. Now 
Now you may notice that the bolt on here is a capture design. See, I can't get it out of there. So you're asking, why do I put those rags down on there still? Well, I've seen these. I've done a lot of these over the years with the screw. It's such a pre precise fit right here where it goes through that little tang that it actually starts threading through there. And it can come out when you're threading it out and you don't even know it until you lose it. So this isn't always a foolproof design and it's best to be safe. So this one you can see is not too bad. The screen on it, it doesn't have no debris from the engine, but this one, the screen on this one is blown out on here, right there, and it's come apart on there. This whole screen is actually coming apart. So it has cracked and lost the screen material inside of here. So it's a good idea to look down in the bore in here with a flashlight all the way down the bottom and there's two slots in the side here for the oil feed you'll see them inside of there and uh, make sure there's no fine debris in there or pieces of the screen before you put your new solenoid in there now your new solenoid is all oiled up already internally it's ready to go bolts in it already comes with it so just make sure that bore is clean line it up there's no seals or nothing like that. The bore is actually uh, is so precise in there that it seals itself. And let's get the screw started by hand here. It's fine threads, small bolt. We don't want to cross thread anything. Tighten it up. You can just do hand tight on here. There's no need for torquing these. Make sure you get your rag out of there. And then we have to start cleaning the whole valve cover gasket area. Remember, this whole area out here is all this corrosion and dirt that's like baked into here. You don't need to go after all this. You just need to go where the shiny part is right here, where it actually seals some of the varnish off, stuff like that. And of course change your, your valve cover gasket on the valve cover itself. And then you're going to want to scrape this sealant off. There's one here and one down here where the head meets the front cover. And we're going to put engine sealant back on there, the black uh, engine sealant. And you can see on here all the varnish that's inside of the valve cover. It's a good indication of the overall maintenance of the vehicle. And that's the same stuff that's sticking that VCT solenoid. Now once the solenoid is bolted in and the gasket surface area on here is cleaned up, I wipe the journals down and all the area in here in case any garbage got in here on accident. And then I go over each one of these lobes on the cam and I, I squirt them with oil on there so they have a fresh oil on there and they're pre-lubed for startup. Now I already have the uh, new gasket pressed into place in the valve cover and the last thing you gotta do is put a dab of engine sealant here, the black engine sealant where the head meets the front cover about that size and it'll squish out nicely without going too far into the head cavity and then besides that just put it back in there very carefully so you don't get your screws scratching the cam journals or anything weird like that and we set it down nice and straight on that silicone sealant. And this VCT solenoid will kind of help you line up all the screws on here. Get your top screws in first. And those will start lining up the bottom ones. They like to hang over and get caught up. We'll go around and make sure that they're all in there, especially in the top and the sides. And that'll kind of guarantee the bottom ones aren't hanging over and messing the gasket up. Now once you got all these bolts threaded in by hand, at least a little bit so you know that they're going in there properly, jump around from the center out in the swirl pattern and you're going bigger and bigger from the center out. And we're just going to snug them down to get that the excessive length out of the bolt so they're snugged up. And then we can go ahead and do an actual torque sequence. I will have the torque sequences down below in the description. 
Um, for the 4.6 liter 3 valve, it's been the same all these years, 10 bolts and a valve cover, whereas the early 5.4 liter 3 valve engines, they had a 15 bolt valve cover. It was a huge mess, and there's, there's bolts in the back back here that were hard to get to and everything else, and then in 2008, they went down to a 10 bolt valve cover also, where it was a lot more robust like this one, and only needed 10 bolts. We're going to clean our spark plug wells out one last time compressed air, just in case. And then we can start dropping coils back into there. These were getting all brand new coils as part of another repair on this particular vehicle. Make sure you put a little bit of dielectric grease in the bottom of the coil. Just a little bit is all it requires. And then these all just simply push right into place. Try to push them in as square as possible so that they actually contact the spark plug down below, the center electrode on there on the top. Get them all in there. Put our little 7 millimeter screws in here. We can just tighten these down, there's no real torque spec for these. I'm sure it's in somewhere in the 50, 60 inch pound range, but I snug them up by hand and they'll never come loose. A little quarter inch ratchet, you can kind of feel it. Or in my case, a quarter inch impact, I can still feel it. So what's great about this tool, it has a good feel to it. And it's a lot quicker than doing it by hand but you're not breaking stuff either. Kind of starts that hammer effect, you can really feel it. And then this harness just comes back down. All I did was pull it off of there and tuck it up out of the way. I never touched the fuel lines or nothing like that. Didn't disconnect anything. I seem to get it out of here. There we go. And then the first thing you want to do is these right here, these push into the valve cover and that will locate the harness all the way down for you. So you get everything in the right place. And then it has, you know, that memory to the harness and it just kind of pushes right in place. It's kind of hard to mess up the connections on here. They're just the right length and like I said, it has that memory. VCT solenoid. That one, that one, these are all connected still. And just go from the front to back and make sure each coil and, you know, fuel injectors connected all the way down. It's about the hardest thing on this particular vehicle, the 463 valve, compared to the 5.4. Pushed in, pushed in. And then over here, I had the connector for the EVAP purge solenoid. I pulled that off to have some extra access and that goes down right here it just slides in and the same thing coming off you press this tang in and it slides off it's got a little bracket here you'll see it and then this connection goes into the intake here under the throttle body until it clicks like that and we'll do our electrical connector obviously and then we'll put this big line on that's coming from the fuel tank area put that back on the purge solenoid it goes in the bottom port until it snaps connector. Everything kind of lays in position so it kind of helps you memorize where everything goes. Put our PCV ventilation line back on here. Just snaps into place. And then plug the other side into the front of the intake. Right next to the throttle body you'll see it. The one other thing I forgot to mention that I did already was put that 8mm screw back into the head that you know that supports the 
um, oil dipstick tube here. All right, now that wasn't so bad, was it? Just a few bolts, get the harnesses out of the way, the coils out of the way, and that solenite slips right into there. So it's a pretty easy job. Um, as far as diagnosing this problem, there'll be a future video out on how to diagnose this for over advanced, over retarded codes, even a PO340 codes are common with these, any kind of timing error codes. Uh, because of these solenite sticking can, can occur. And I'll show you a quick, easy, five second test you can do uh, to see if these solenites are actually sticking or not. And then you know, hey, I need to order them up and uh, start changing stuff out on here. So be on the lookout for that video and a bunch more videos coming out. I've got a bunch of work coming in uh, with the shop here and there's gonna be a lot of different new videos coming out. Uh, so just stay tuned, be patient.